Welcome to the Market Call Show, where we discuss what's happening in the markets and the impact on your investments. Tune in every Thursday on Apple Podcast, Google Play, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Welcome to the Market Call Show. This is Louis Giannis. I'm going to be talking about something that is important to every single investor, something that we must understand, and it's all about context. It's about context because context lets you put the pieces together of the puzzle. The, the puzzle must be put together to make good, sound investment choices. And I'm going to be talking today about something a lot of people are talking about. But today, you're going to get information that is not what you're hearing in the news media. It's not what you're hearing when you turn on CNBC. This is going to be something that is actually really relevant to you today. So I'm going to actually be pulling up some graphs and some charts, okay? And in those graphs, there's only a few of them. I'm going to be talking about some of the things that make the most impact on the context in terms of inflation and what that means for the Federal Reserve, interest rates, and for investments across the board. So I'm just going to go ahead and start diving into these charts. So take a look at this first chart, okay? This first chart, it is a real simple chart. What it is, is it is two lines. It is the effective federal funds rate which is an excellent indicator of what the Federal Reserve is doing in terms of whether they're tight with money or whether they're loose with money. So that line is the blue line on this graph. And then the other line that you're seeing is the US inflation rate. It's the Consumer Price Index inflation rate. So what we're gonna compare, we're gonna go back all the way to 1954 and we're gonna look at all of the recessions which are those gray lines that, go up, that are up and down. And those are the, that's the period of time when we have gone into an official recession. And what we're going to do is we're going to compare how the Fed has been responding throughout the business cycle and what the normal relationships are and how that has changed in more recent history and what that means for investors today. So this is all about context. Okay, so let's start back in 1954. As you move your way through time from 1954, you could see that historically, the effective federal funds rate is above the inflation rate. When it's below the inflation rate, it's very rare. But And when it is below, the Fed is being excessively loose. Okay, so that was the normal relationship for a long time. Uh, and we had this massive inflation move all throughout the 70s into the early 80s. And we had big rises and big peaks, but the overall uh, inflation trend was higher. And you could see that as we're going through time. As we went through time, this inflation went up and down with big peaks and valleys, but it really went higher. But notice again, the effective federal funds rate, the Federal Reserve was responding to inflation and actually trying to control inflation to some degree and actually stay tight above the inflation rate in the early 80s. So that was something that was new and it stayed that way for quite a while. And we went through this long period of time after the early 80s in that first recession, the Ronald Reagan first recession, we had a long period of declining interest rate. Everybody knows this, but the key point is what you see here on this bottom right of the chart. You see there, I have that number one there. We had an extended period of easy money compared to history during the Obama administration. Now we used an excuse of the uh, you know global crisis or the, the real estate crisis, but in reality we had been dropping rates, dropping rates, dropping rates. Greenspan was doing the same thing, excessive money. But then we went really excessive, and look what you can see the federal funds rate with this line here horizontally. How far below and for how many years we just printed money during the Obama administration. If you worry about your investments, need to make complex financial decisions, or pay unnecessary taxes, a lack of proper financial planning and investing may already be costing you a great deal. When you are ready to turn your peace of wealth into peace of mind, go to WealthNetInvest.com and click on the Schedule a Call button to talk to us and get a free consultation today. Now, as soon as the Trump administration came into office, you could see we tried to reverse our prior sins and there was gradual adjustments up, 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 up. The Federal Reserve was tightening all throughout the Trump administration. 
so that was starting to try to kind of get things back to normal. But then we had the pandemic and it was already too late. We'd already printed a ton of money. We'd already had a lot of problems in our economy and, and the debt burden has gotten so big. And you could see the expansion. Look at this unprecedented level and spread between the inflation rate just skyrocketing to 9% very quickly. And the federal funds rate is, even though the Fed has moved up 75 basis points a couple times, we're still sitting at two spot 32. 2.32% on the effective federal funds rate. That is an enormous spread. It's not sustainable. So one of two things is going to happen. We're either going to have inflation come down, which the market prices are actually expecting that prices are going to be coming down. And you can see that because the valuations, you could look at the earnings multiples, the cash flow multiples, the price to sales multiples, the price to book multiples. They're all showing that th there's still embedded optimism. We've had a correction in the stock market, but it was not a major correction. It was kind of a garden variety correction so far. Now, given the spread that we've seen here, you, one could argue that the Fed, if, if we cannot turn things around, okay, if we, if we cannot turn the inflation rate around, the Fed will have to raise even more. The Fed is telling you that they're neutral, but based on historical relationships, that does not appear to be the case. So if that's true, now I'm not saying for sure we know that, that inflation is not just going to just plummet from 9% down to, you know, 3 or 4%, you know, maybe that happens, but it's not likely. And Keep in mind, even if we do have a drop in inflation, as we saw in the you know 70s and 80s, early 80s, we saw multiple uh, spikes in inflation with little drops, and then but then they went to new highs, and we had this overall uptrend in inflation. So that could be the scenario. We don't. Nobody knows the actual scenario, but the probabilities do exist right now. Looking at the data, and, you know, forget about all the politics and all the things that people are saying. You know, even what the Fed's saying that they're somewhat neutral. We're still back at the level that we were under the Trump administration. And that wasn't neutral neutral at that time, given the inflation rate. Look at the spread. So I don't believe this is an entirely a supply chain phenomenon. This is also a monetary phenomenon of printing a lot of money, too much money, chasing too few, too, too few goods. So if you look at this next chart here, go to the next one. This is another easy graph to understand because I wanted to actually point out something that you're hearing. If you're watching the news or if you're, you know, just any, anybody just keeping an eye on what's happening, the rhetoric that we're hearing from Washington is that, Hey, we're not in a recession. We've had two negative quarters, but that doesn't mean anything. We've had two negative GDP quarters in growth declines, but Hey, this is not a recession. You know why? Because Employment is strong. Look at the unemployment rate. Okay, so this is the graph going back to 1954 till today. Same time frame, looking at those recessions. And if you look at these arrows I put here, before every recession, and even as you're going into recession, almost always the unemployment rate is low. Almost always. So what's different about this, my friends? What is different about this scenario? We're seeing in real time companies that are reporting and companies that are laying off. Now, I don't know about you, but when I was a, a you know, if you studied business, when I studied economics, that one of the first things they teach you is that there are leading indicators and there's lag lagging indicators. And unemployment is what? A lagging indicator. It is not a leading indicator. So let's, let's just kind of say we might be, I'm not saying we are, but we might be dealing with just a bunch of political rhetoric and we should be focusing on the data. So as an investor, for me right now, I am under the assumption that we are in a recession. I'm also on the assumption, under the assumption that the Fed may have to raise interest rates more, even though they're saying that they're neutral. If you just follow what the Fed says versus what they do, you will see over and over and over and over again that they say something and then they do something else. And they say, well, I was wrong. Will they just do that again? I don't know for sure, but they might. And if they do, and they raise rates even further, and we've already had two negative quarters of GDP growth, will we one day say, well, oh, okay, oops, we are in a recession. 
okay, we're coming up on an election and I just did a series on the summer shorts that said, hey, there's going to be a lot of noise and you have to cut through the noise. And one of the precepts, and I went through first principles of how you cut through noise. One of the things that you do is you look at data. You don't listen to what people say. You look at data. So if, as we're looking at the data, you know, it doesn't tell hundred percent with, you know, we cannot forecast the future with hundred percent certainty, but we can work with probabilities. My friends, I think the probabilities are saying, yes, we are in a recession. Yes, the Fed's going to tighten more. And yes, the stock market may have a little more trouble. With that said, with that said, we are actually increasing some of our exposure in equities because we follow rules. Now, when we're following rules, we're looking at what are the valuations with certain stocks. We're going deep underneath the hood, stock by stock. And we're looking at what are the, what's the sentiment? What do the balance sheets look like? So right now, we've actually been increasing some of our stocks. Most of the stocks that have been doing, giving us the strongest signal strength, we look at what we call it signal strength. Um, those are, you know, the higher the signal strength, the more attractive the stock is. So right now, most of the stocks that are giving us more attractive signal strengths are more of the growth companies and are more equity income type companies are more value quality value type companies. They are, there's less of those types of signals as of yet. So right now, as of today, and it could change, obviously we're at 56% of our uh, budget for equities is committed and invested. So we still have a ton of dry powder. And one of the things I want to talk about is that if you look at historically now, this is something to look at with this next chart. This is the Russell 2000, which is really more of the small cap companies. And because we want to look at these small cap companies when you're in a decline, because they tend to tell you more about the sentiment and they have a little more volatility. But what we see is the market overall is in a downtrend. We're still technically from a technical perspective in a downtrend and you can clearly see it, but we're showing signs that maybe that trend is changing at least maybe sideways. But whenever you have a bear market, you can have these rallies that go up and they can last for a while before they roll down again. And if you've been listening to any of the, my other presentations, I talk about how, uh, you know, some of the largest uh, one day up moves or, you know, that we see in history do not happen during bull markets. They happen during bear markets and that is just simply because the volatility is more uh, is higher when markets are going down and also that we have short covering which can be really fast buying sprees um, you know as investors or hedge funds or speculators are, are covering their short positions that where they've been betting on the market going down and so they have to buy when they do that and they have to do it very quickly. So that can kind of get, you can get these, these, these counter trend moves. You're going down, then you have this big counter trend move and you can see we had one, two, three. This is the fourth counter trend move. We move, we are though losing that downside momentum. So there is some, uh, you know, being fully out. And as you know, we, we generally don't get fully in or out of the equity market. Sometimes we do, but usually not. Um, so we are actually investing and, you know, I would tell investors today, I was just having a conversation last night over a glass of wine and, um, <laughs> you know, it's amazing over a glass of wine, you can have much more interesting conversations and, and sometimes you just say how you see it based on the valuations, based on everything that we're seeing. If this market goes down another 12, 15%, I'm telling people like, you know, I was telling this person, you just, you, you need to just send more money to your account because then we're in a setup where we can say, yeah, valuations are kind of, they make sense now. And if we have a rotation, if we, we you know, it's time to start even being more uh, um, uh, committing capital, especially as we see the technicals turn. But you always want to be ahead of it. I wrote in my chapter of my book, and if you haven't done so, I highly recommend going to uh, path to real wealth.com go to path to real wealth.com and uh, you can see you can get a free chapter of my book the financial freedom blueprint you can also buy the book you can get a signed copy of the book on that website if you look for it there um, but if you want to just see that first chapter uh, it is relevant to what we're talking about today because i'm talking about getting ahead of the herd 
And in order to get ahead of the herd, you have to kind of be a step steps ahead. You're not reacting to what the news says or anything like that. You're looking at the data. So if we have more of a, uh, a decline, you want to be ahead of that. And then you want to say, okay, now I'm going to commit some more. And, and I'm a long-term investor. I'm looking for long-term uh, growth. And uh, if you have a good solid plan, that's the way to go. So, uh, but in the meantime, if we have a, a rollover to the downside, the Fed continues to uh, raise rates, uh, it's possible that we could see a rollover in equities. So just, I would tell you, be prepared. Have, have a plan to be prepared. Don't try to predict necessarily. Look at the data, be prepared. And, and then you can actually quickly respond to what is happening and follow the trends. That is uh, the easiest way to stay out of trouble and to have a very low stress lifestyle too, because when you can follow the trends, and by the way, I'm going to have Tom Basso, who is uh, actually known as Mr. Serenity, a very uh, accomplished investment manager who is now retired, um, has a, some great, great insights, and he's going to be coming on. I'm really looking forward to that. But one of the things that he talks about is enjoying the ride. If you have the right types of strategies where instead of like trying to hide from risk or just hope when things go down that they rebound, that you actually attack risk, which is one of the things he said in a recent interview, then, then my friend, you can have much more serene, a serene lifestyle. And that's our job as investment managers, as financial advisors to our clients. We try to help you turn your peace of wealth into peace of mind. That's all for today. I hope you're having a great day. We'll talk to you soon. Bye. If you worry about your investments, need to make complex financial decisions, or pay unnecessary taxes, a lack of proper financial planning and investing may already be costing you a great deal. When you are ready to turn your piece of wealth into peace of mind, go to wealthnetinvest.com and click on the schedule a call button to talk to us and get a free consultation today. For the latest episode of The Market Call Show, make sure to like, subscribe, and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Go to marketcallshow.com for all our past episodes and sign up to get alerts for new episodes. If you enjoy the content of this episode, please leave us a five-star review and comments. The information in this podcast is informational and general in nature and does not take into consideration the listener's personal circumstances. Therefore, it is not intended to be a substitute for specific, individualized financial, legal, or tax advice. To determine which strategies or investments may be suitable for you, consult the appropriate qualified professional prior to making a final decision. WealthNet Investments is a registered investment advisor. Advisory services are only offered to clients or prospective clients where WealthNet Investments and its representatives are properly licensed or exempt from licensure.